Lady Helen Windsor. Helen, the Duke and Duchess of Kent's daughter and reformed royal wild child, commissioned Walker to design the gown for her 1992 wedding. The venue was St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle and the ornate architecture inspired the designer who drew from the arches in the creation of the unique wide neckline and sleeves. The embroidery was chosen for the diamond and pearl tiara the bride was to wear. The creation of the dress, assembled from 10 full-length panels, was technically complicated. The designer writes that she had to bribe her talented team to work on it. Getting the right fit was key to the dress shape and Walker even decided to recut the bodice frighteningly near the wedding after the bride had lost a lot of weight. The bodice flared out to a full skirt with a cathedral length train and a tulle veil to match. Astrid of Sweden Astrid wore different dresses for her two ceremonies. Both were made of satin. The Swedish dress featured a scooped neckline with scalloped layers of lace trimmed satin at the hem. At the Belgian wedding, she wore a cream wrap dress with sprigs of lilies of the valley at her waist. The train was trimmed with embroidered flowers and seed pearls. The skirt of the dress featured more Brussels lace with a long train. She carried a bouquet of lilies of the valley and orchids. Her veil was made of Brussels lace, the same for both ceremonies. During the Swedish ceremony, Astrid wore a crown of myrtle in her hair, typical for Swedish brides. She wore the same veil for both weddings. The wearing of the Swedish myrtle crown made a slightly different style. Queen Victoria Queen Victoria started the tradition of white weddings and white bridal gowns in 1840. The plain cream satin gown was made from fabric woven in Spitalsfield, London and trimmed with a deep flounce and trimmings of lace handmade in Devon. This demonstrated support for English industry. The lace motifs were appliqued onto cotton machine made net. Orange blossoms, a symbol of fertility, also trimmed the dress and made up a wreath which Victoria wore instead of a tiara over her veil. The veil matched the flounce of the dress and was four yards in length and 0.75 yards wide. Her jewellery consisted of a necklace and earrings made of diamonds presented to her by the Sultan of Turkey and a sapphire cluster brooch given to her by her husband-to-be, Albert. The slippers matched the white colour of the dress. The train carried by her bridesmaids was 18 feet, that's 5.5 metres in length. Lisa Halaby of Jordan King Hussein I of Jordan and Lisa Halaby were married on June 15, 1978. King Hussein gave Lisa a new Arabic name, Noah al Hussein, meaning Light of Hussein. She persuaded her hairdresser to arrange her hair as simple as possible. A band of white flowers held her hair in place with a simple veil. She wore no makeup. She partially followed the Western tradition and wore something blue and something new. The something blue was a wedding present from her father, a sapphire stick pin from Tiffany. Something new was a pair of diamond drop earrings from a set of jewellery, a gift from the Prince of Saudi Arabia. The diamond drop earrings were quite dramatic, so she decided to remove the drops and just wear the tops. Princess Alexia of Greece and Denmark 
The 1999 dress featured a wide v-neck with a strong shoulder shape formed in heavy off-white satin. The slim fit bodice has a cross seam detail and the long sleeves and back are accented with embroidered and beaded buttons. A long train extended from her waist at the back. Like many family members before her, Alexia opted to drape her great-grandmother, Crown Princess Margaret's Irish lace veil over her hair and topped the whole thing with the family traditional wedding tiara the Khedive of Egypt tiara and a pair of diamond earrings. Princess Eugenie of York It features a wide neck V-shape, folded shoulders and a low back that drapes into a flowing full-length train. She asked the designer to make an open back dress as she wanted her scar from the scoliosis operation that she underwent at the age of 12 to be revealed. The fabric featured different symbols in form of rope-like motifs woven into a jacquard of silk, cotton and viscose blend. These symbols were a Scottish thistle to show the couple's fondness for Balmoral an Irish shamrock, a nod to the bride's maternal family, a York rose, a reference to her family name of York, and ivy, which represented the ivy cottage, the couple's residence at Kensington Palace. She wore the gravel emerald Kokoshnik tiara, which was lent to her by her grandmother, the Queen. It is made of brilliant and rose-cut diamonds set in platinum, with six emeralds on either side. Queen Sylvia of Sweden Sylvia chose to go to France for her wedding dress to Dior and Marc Bohan. The result is a 1976 silk duchess gown, almost stark in its simplicity, with a high neck, long sleeves, slim skirt and train extending from the shoulders. Sylvia was wearing both an intricate veil and a showpiece tiara. The veil, a Swedish wedding tradition, dates from Queen Sophia and had been worn by Carl Gustav's late mother, Princess Sibylla, among many other family members. She wore it interestingly folded up under the cameo tiara, another Swedish wedding tradition she helped to solidify. A tissue was strapped to her wrist by a rubber band. It was insisted upon by her mother and forgotten, but seen in nearly every shot of her waving her right hand. Surya Esfandiri Bakhtiari, Queen Consort of Iran the 1951 bride wore a wedding dress by Christian Dior. It had 20,000 feathers and 6,000 diamond pieces sewn onto the dress and jacket. She had a lot of difficulty in walking under such a heavy load. A skillful lady in waiting was summoned with a pair of scissors who cut off yards of the petticoat and the train without her having to take off the wedding gown. Princess Alexandra, Lady Ogilvy. The bride wore a wedding dress of lace with matching veil and train designed by John Kavanagh. The wedding dress included a piece of lace from the bride's late grandmother, Princess Nicholas of Greece and Denmark, and the veil worn by Lady Patricia Ramsay at her own wedding in 1919. She wore the diamond fringe tiara given to her mother, Princess Marina of Greece, when she married Prince George. Duke of Kent in 1934. Marie Antoinette The 14-year-old bride wore an enormous white and silver dress decorated with white diamonds. 
The dress was too small. Miscalculating her measurements, the dressmakers had constructed the gown so that it did not fit. No matter how tightly they had tried to cinch the body of the dress, it didn't properly cover the lacing and shift poking out from the back, which meant there was a strange gap between the rows of diamonds. Alexandra of Denmark The 1863 dress was made of white silk satin, trimmed with orange blossoms, myrtle, teal puffs and lace. It had a silk trimmed 21 feet, that's 6.4 metre silver moire train, which was carried by eight young ladies aged 15 to 20. A matching lace veil, train trimming and handkerchief were also made using silk satin. The pattern of the lace depicted cornucopias filled with English roses, Irish shamrocks, and Scottish thistles. She wore a wreath of orange blossom and myrtle and carried a bouquet of orange blossoms, white rosebuds, lily of the valley, orchids and myrtle. Farah Deba of Iran the 1959 Yves Saint Laurent dress featured a scoop neck with a modest coat to go over the top. The whole affair was embroidered with Persian motifs depicted in sequins, pearls and silver thread. The train had a distinctive fur-lined hem. Unseen, blue was sewn into some of the hems as a sort of good luck charm for the birth of a boy. Marie of Edinburgh, Queen of Romania Princess Marie was draped in a robe of white corded silk embroidered with pearls. The skirt was trimmed with bouquets of myrtle and orange blossom. The body bordered with white velvet and adorned also with myrtle and orange blossom. The bridal veil was tulle and a gift from her mother. Her ornamentation was the diamond necklace presented by the King of Romania and Prince Ferdinand and a diadem and cross of diamonds, the gift from the Duchess of Edinburgh. Princess Madeline of Sweden she chose the Italian designer Valentino for her dress. It was made of silk organza with ivory coloured chantilly lace, with a wide skirt ending in a four metre train. Her veil was also a silk organza, edged with teal and small lace orange blossoms. Breaking from tradition, she chose to wear the modern fringe tiara instead of the cameo tiara. The bride's bouquet was a mixture of several different white roses with lilies of the valley and myrtle. The myrtle comes from a bush brought to Sweden by Princess Margaret of Connaught after her marriage to the future King Gustav VI Adolf in 1905. Since the 1930s, royal brides of Sweden have traditionally worn or carried a sprig of this myrtle at their weddings to bring good luck. Jetsun Pima of Bhutan the wedding featured traditional Bhutanese attire. The bride had ordered several elaborate kiras. The national dress from among prominent weavers in the country. She chose a kira which took three years to weave. It's an ankle length dress consisting of a rectangular piece of woven fabric wrapped and folded around the body which is then pinned at both shoulders. The kira was coloured red, yellow, green and white, along with red earrings. The colours are symbolic of astrology, a light yellow tego, a short jacket, with a long sleeved blouse inside, was also worn. Sophie, Countess of Wessex the 1999 dress is made of hand-dyed silk organza and silk crepe. 
its full length with long sleeves and the detail consists of rows of pearl crystal beading around the neck, sleeves and train and beading down the back and front of the dress coat. 325,000 cut glass and pearl beads were sewn on the dress which is corseted with a v-neck. The veil is one inch longer than the train. It is made of silk tulle and hand finished with spotted crystal detail. And Sophie wore a black and white pearl necklace interspersed with white gold roundels and matching black and white pearl earrings. She wore a diamond open work scroll motif tiara. Grand Duchess Marie Alexandrovna of Russia. The Grand Duchess who became the Duchess of Edinburgh wore a silver and gem set sarafan, a traditional dress worn by all Russian imperial brides. A glittering coronet and a mantle of crimson velvet trimmed with ermine and a sprig of myrtle specially sent by Queen Victoria with the traditional Kokoshnik headdress. Queen Victoria's lady-in-waiting, Lady Augusta Stanley, wrote in a letter to the Queen that her new daughter-in-law's head must have ached with the immense weight of jewels, the necklace of diamonds, the most beautiful I ever saw. Queen Fabiola of Belgium the dress features a high neckline and three quarter length sleeves with a drop waist and a full skirt. The neckline is trimmed in ermine which extends back to border the 7 metre train. The skirt is also trimmed in ermine. She accessorised with white silk gloves and the Nine Provinces tiara to anchor the tulle veil in place. The tiara had been a gift to Queen Astrid from the Belgian people. The dress was heavy and complicated to move. The Catholic bride had been up most of the night in prayer and was fasting in order to receive the Eucharist on an empty stomach. As a result, she was teary and fainted four times during the course of the four-hour wedding. Danika Marinkovic. She married Prince Philip of Serbia in 2017. She was the modern bride in a full-length silk gown that featured billowy sheer long sleeves, a thick belt and a sweeping train. Her hair was styled into an elegant low twist and decorated with pearls. The graphic designer accessorised with emerald diamond drop earrings, a matching pendant necklace and of course her new wedding band. Queen Mary of the United Kingdom or Mary of Tech. The front of the 1893 dress was made of white satin featuring three small flounces of lace which had been used on the wedding dress of her mother. It featured embroidery of a rose, shamrock and thistle trimmed with traditional orange blossom and true lover's knots. The bodice cut at the throat was long, pointed and made of white and silver brocade. The rich satin mantier decor fell from her shoulders. The train was long and plain and the veil was fastened by diamond pins, a gift from Queen Victoria. Small wreaths of orange blossoms were placed all the way around the bust and hair. Mary completed the outfit with a diamond tiara from Queen Victoria, a diamond necklace from the Prince and Princess of Wales and diamond earrings and anchor brooch, a wedding gift from Prince George. Princess Tatiana of Greece. Her 2010 game was traditional yet sophisticated, created from 131 feet of French Chantilly lace. The strapless dress featured a moulded bodice that showed off her slender waist before falling to her feet and finishing in a sweeping train. Her hair was fashioned into elaborate coils at the nape of her neck to set off a tiara she'd been lent by her mother-in-law, Queen Anne Marie. 
Princess Brigitte of Sweden. Brigitte wore a 1961 creation in thick pale ivory silk with a wide neckline, three quarter sleeves, and a slim waist above a full skirt and a train of around four meters. Princess Louise, Duchess of Argyle. For her 1871 wedding, Louise wore a white silk wedding gown, heavily decorated with national and royal symbols, with deep flounces of flower strewn lace and a veil of lace that she designed herself. The veil was held in place by two diamond daisy hairpins presented by her siblings. Princess Arthur and Leopold, and Princess Beatrice. A beautiful bracelet was a present from her fiancé. The centre could be worn as a pendant, with a large sapphire mounted with brilliant diamonds and pearls, and a pearl drop. Princess Louise wore this pendant on a diamond necklace, and it can be seen in her wedding photographs. Alexandra Fyodorovna of Russia, Alex of Hesse. Her outfit was so intricate that it took nearly an hour for her to dress. Her stockings were of lace, her shoes embroidered and decorated. Over these she wore layers of stiff petticoats. The wide full skirt of silver brocade opened from the waist down to reveal a second underskirt of silver tissue edged with fur. It was cut low to reveal the neck and shoulders and the gown had sleeves trailing ermine. The tightly fitted boned bodice was sewn with diamonds. The folds of the overskirt fell back to form a train. She wore the imperial mantle of cloth of gold lined and edged with ermine. These robes were so heavy that four pages had to help carry them. She wore her hair swept back. Two long twin side curls were attached to her own hair. Her long veil of tulle was held in place by a Russian Kokoshnik tiara of diamonds in platinum and the Romanov nuptial crown of diamonds sewn on crimson velvet. Queen Letizia of Spain The dress was designed to appear quite simple but is in reality a pattern making wonder. The designer took bespoke natural silk woven with silver thread and cut it continuously from shoulder to floor, creating a gown that is slim in front and flows out into a large round 15 feet long train. Silver and gold threads were embroidered in shapes of fleur-de-lis and fleur-de-lis flowers, clovers, strawberry, fruits and ears of wheat around the sleeves and the base of the dress and train. The high collar is embroidered on both sides. She wore the Prussian diamond tiara on loan from Queen Sophia, paired with diamond earrings. Her veil was three meters long and two meters wide. It was cut to echo the shape of the train, made of off-white silk tulle. It was hand embroidered with garlands, ears of wheat, fleur de lace, and strawberries. Lady Gabriella Windsor. The 2019 dress features lace embroidered with flowers and embellishments that continue over elegant sheer peerless blush sleeves. There is a light tulle corset that holds the dress's strapless part. The sleeves are transparent lace doubled with light tulle. The colour of the dress, which looks white, is actually a shade of palest blush pink obtained from different layers of tulle and organza that make the body of the gown. The front of the dress is quite pure and fluid, while the back of the dress is more dramatic. The skirt fans out into a long train. Her six metre veil was made from layers of tulle together with embroidered flowers finished with a pale yellow bouquet. Princess Astrid of Norway, Mrs. Ferner. 
Princess Astrid was a very determined royal bride. Her choice of husband was Johann Martin Ferner, a businessman, commoner and divorcee. The bride would lose her HRH as a result of the marriage. Her gown was pure white with a high scalloped neck, long fitted sleeves and a full skirt that spread out rather discreetly from the waist. The skirt had bands of silver embroidery running around it. What sets this apart from other royal wedding dresses is that there was nothing else, no train and no big long veil. Astrid kept that very simple with a small teal veil placed at the top of her head and held in place with a white clip. No tiara, just a simple 1960s headdress that wouldn't look out of place in any other wedding photo of the time. Louise Margaret of Prussia, Duchess of Connaught and Strathern. The 1879 bride wore a heavy white satin dress. A band of lace 10 centimetres long encircled the waist. The skirt was sewn with lace and decorated with a bunch of myrtle leaves, the emblem in Germany of the bridal state. The long train was four metres long and surmounted by a lace flounce in which a sprig of myrtle was fixed. The bridal veil was about three metres square, made of lace, the design representing orange blossoms, roses and myrtle leaves intertwined. The veil was fastened to her hair with five diamond stars, a gift from her bridegroom. The princess carried a bouquet of white flowers. Princess Sophia of Sweden the gown was created in three tones of white. It featured intricate couture lace and a train that was hand cut and hand stitched. The 2015 gown had a strapless base of silk crepe with a flowing train and a long sleeved Italian silk organza overlay. Lace created flattering lines down the front of the dress and train and was concentrated on the sleeves and the wide neckline. Hand embroidered cotton lace also adorned her sheer tulle veil. Completing her gown was a cascade style bouquet of cream and coral garden roses with a traditional sprig of myrtle. For the reception, the new princess hitched up the full flowing skirt with a wrist clip so that she could waltz into the night with her new husband. Sophie received a tiara as a gift from the king and queen. It has a diamond base of honeysuckle motifs and is topped by emeralds. Personally, this and Lady Sarah Chateau's dresses are two of my favourites. Bridget, Duchess of Gloucester. The dress has floral embossing, a high collar, a simple skirt, long sleeves and a small train. Instead of wearing a tiara, the bride secured her white tulle veil with a grouping of flowers. The dress was regarded by some as one of Norman Hartnell's more modern creations for the time, incorporating some stylistic features of the 1970s fashion. Stephanie of Luxembourg it took a total of 3,900 hours to make and an extraordinary 3,200 for the embroidery. The design complete with the 13 foot train was embellished with 50,000 pearls and threaded with ethereal silver filigree. The flattering earline hem was set off by a fitted bodice with three quarter length sleeves that enhanced the princess's petite frame. Whilst the skirt embossed with 80,000 transparent crystals spread upon the steps as she walked up to the cathedral in Luxembourg, the leaf motif of the dress complemented the design of the diamond headdress. Princess Beatrice of the United Kingdom On the 23rd of July 1885, 
Princess Beatrice of the United Kingdom wore a wedding dress of white satin trimmed with orange blossom and lace. The lace overskirt was held by bouquets of blossom entwined with white heather. There was lace on the pointed neckline and sleeves. For the princess was a lover of and an expert on lace. One of her most treasured possessions was a tunic of old point lace which had belonged to Catherine of Aragon. Knowing her daughter's love of lace, Queen Victoria allowed Beatrice to wear the lace veil which she herself had worn on her wedding day. It was a very precious possession to the Queen and Beatrice was the only one of her daughters to wear it. The veil was emblazoned with a diamond circlet with diamond stars, a wedding gift from her mother. Princess Sophie of Prussia Sophie's 2011 dress was created by German designer Wolfgang Jupe and includes multiple kinds of silk with unique asymmetrical plates and inserts. 60 meters of material was used for the gown. Over the dress, she wore a transparent silk organza jacket that extends back and creates the longer portion of her train. The dress is dyed to match the particular antique white shade of the Eisenberg family veil, which is over 100 years old and is so fragile it had to be stitched onto the train to ensure it wouldn't drag on the ground. The ensemble was capped with another one of Sophie's family heirlooms, the Eisenberg Tiara, a beautiful and delicate diamond floral diadem, which was changed for a Kokoschnik style tiara for the evening festivities. Maria Theresa, Grand Duchess of Luxembourg. Her 1981 wedding dress was made of white silk embossed with an intricate pattern. The floor-length dress had rather simple lines with a bell skirt and subtle leg of mutton sleeves. It featured a jewel neckline and fitted bodice with the cuffs, collar and hem trimmed in fur. The dress also had a train that descended from the shoulders and extended about 2 metres meeting the length of Maria Theresa's lace-trimmed veil. She wore attached to her veil the Congo diamond tiara brought to Luxembourg from Belgium by her mother-in-law, Belgian princess Josephine Charlotte. Princess Margaret of Connaught. Her gown made in France was white satin with orange blossoms and myrtle covered with white Irish lace. Instead of a tiara, she wore a floral crown which held her veil in place. The veil was a gift from the ladies of Ireland and was later worn by her daughter Ingrid of Sweden and all of Ingrid's female descendants. The flowers in her hair and the bridal bouquet featured daisies. Kendra Spears Princess Salwa Aga Khan she wore a traditional sari in ivory and gold, teamed with delicate jewellery, nude sandals, and a soft twist in her hair. Princess Margareta of Sweden Margareta studied dressmaking and for her 1964 wedding designed a simple silk dress with a straight silhouette, short train and long sleeves. She wore the lace family wedding veil from Queen Sophia. The bridal crown belonged to the church she married in, perched atop a myrtle wreath. Bridal crowns are traditional and occur in various forms in different cultures, but the height and size of this crown makes quite the statement. Nariman Sadek, Queen Consort of Egypt In May 1951, at the age of 17, she married Farouk of Egypt. The couple's wedding was lavish and extravagant. She wore a white satin bridal gown embroidered with 20,000 diamonds and a 16-foot train. Sarah 
Crown Princess of Brunei. In September 2004, an event dubbed the Asian Wedding of the Year took place. What's more, the marriage of Prince Al Mutadi Bala of Brunei and Sarah Sella cost many millions of pounds. The teenage bride's stunning blue outfit was decorated with many gemstones and diamonds. Even her bouquet was made of solid gold. Princess Martha Louise of Norway The Swarovski crystal embellished court has two major sources of inspiration. The Martha Lily and the Gothic arches of the cathedral where the ceremony took place. The colour of the off-white duchess satin used echoes the colour of the lily and the form of the court also mimics the flower. The Gothic inspiration is most prevalent in the pointed arch tip of the three metre train. A thread of life vine is embroidered around the edge of the train and the end of the train features an embroidered circle of five lilies. The clasp of the jacket is a bejeweled ear Ferrari made of pearls, 16 diamonds and gold, topped by a silk chiffon veil in the same cut as the train, anchored by Queen Maud's pearl and diamond tiara. The dress under the coat is a much simpler affair of sleeveless white silk crepe. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.